Hello, this is Richard from Anime.com and this is a short introduction to the basics of Balance Run. So let's start to look at the character which we have here. It's a very basic character with a very simple uh, skeleton armature inside and uh, it has a bunch of iKey targets. In case you don't know what iKey targets are, they are used to animate armatures and uh, generally you use empty objects, uh, any, one, any of these, to drive the bones. And in pose mode of your armature, you can select a bone, go to the bone constraints and uh, tell that you want to add an inverse kinematics constraint, which looks like this, where you can select your empty object. Like in this case, I selected the left hand of the character. So I choose uh, an inverse kinematics target of the left hand to drive the angle of the arm, of the left arm. Balance Run animates these iKey targets in global space. And in case of Rigify, it will animate them in the local rig space, so in the object space of your armature, where they are usually placed. However, if you are uh, using a character and uh, set up your iKey targets like here, we could start to animate it. But of course, we don't want to animate everything, like each bone and each target. With Balance Run, we are able to uh, animate a simple object as a target for the whole character. And then the character will follow the target across the scene. So it's crucial that we have some iKey targets for the feet, which will drive uh, the motion, the animation of our legs. And of course, a helper object, which will move the rest of our armature. I placed an empty sphere here, called it hip. And uh, I would like to add this to the center bone, to the root bone of my armature. Uh, I can go into the armature pose bones uh, and select the uppermost bone in pose mode. So I'm able to add a bone constraint and I want to add a copy location and select the hip empty object as well as a copy rotation. You can find them here both and select the hip here. So it copies uh, the rotation and the location of the hip empty which is here. If I move it now, the whole uh, rig is moving with it and still trying to seek the iKey targets, which we set up earlier. I'm using iKey targets for the hands and for the head and some for the ankles. The only thing now you have to animate is a target object, which is the cube here. It's moving around the scene and the character shall follow it. So we could uh, just select the armature. Uh, let's move to object space instead. So let's check if all our targets are uh, selected. We want to follow the target object, which is the cube. The hip, which is the root bone uh, copy location and copy rotation constraint target is the hip, which is uh, selected as well. And we need at least two iKey targets for the feet. So Balance Run works uh, from two to up to eight feet. Um, and here are some props, which are just additional optional iKey targets. These are not necessary. What we need is a target and two feet. Uh, well, and we can start to animate. First, have a look at the simulation parameters in the basic mode. There is also an advanced mode, which has much more parameters available. But for the beginning, let's just focus on the simplest parameters. We have a time frame, a duration. We start at frame one and end with our keyframes at uh, frame 280. In this duration, um, keyframes will be generated on the timeline. Next, we have a step time. That's the time one step would take if the character has, uh, has time to make the step. It could be faster than the duration we set here. 
uh, if if the motion needs it faster so that uh, the character can balance and can step down um, without jumping or flying, then it will be 10 frames, for example, or 8 frames. But in case our character is moving slowly, then one step will take about 20 frames uh, from lifting the foot to setting the foot down on the next position. The last parameter is the swing parameter. It's set to 25. Uh, it's a percentage effector for how much bounciness uh, all the IK target should have and how much uh, the hip will bounce. 25% seems okay. We can change it afterwards. We can generate keyframes over and over again and simulate it. Uh, so let's start to simulate. And already we see our character walk around and not only uh, follow the target, but also follows the rotation of the target. So if I select our, our target object here, we see how it rotates in space and the character also rotates in that direction. So I'm quite happy. Let's watch uh, what turns out if I use 100% swing factor and generate the keyframe again. Of course, I need to select the armature for that because that's where I stored the IK target information should swing a little bit more now and yes we see the IK targets especially for the props they're jumping up and down so this is definitely too much but it really depends on the scale and the topology or the armature itself um, how its proportions are how big your swing factor should be so let's go back to 25% Next, I want to show you how to use a ground mesh. It's really pretty straightforward, but let's quickly generate a landscape where now our character should walk along. For this purpose, I'm generating a plane, subdivide it 10 times and displace the mesh with a modifier. I'm using clouds as displacement texture, adjust the scale, and strength of displacement. And then I will subdivide the mesh so that it gets smoother and our character can walk along. Of course, you can use any mesh, but be careful because uh, the character will and the feet will um, consider the normal of the faces it steps on. So uh, you don't want to uh, have too too much detail in your landscape or the feet will start flipping around uh, just to touch very small faces which uh, might have normals facing to the horizon um, and not upwards so let's try to add this landscape to our character animation i'm selecting the armature again and now, of course, I select the ground object here. Uh, it should be plane one. Plane is the character. Let's uh, rename that. And plane one is our landscape. So if we hit the armature, we want the landscape to be our ground. And I hit generate keyframes to simulate our animation. So we don't see much happening here, but if we go to a lower angle for the camera, we see that indeed the character is uh, moving along the surface. Um, if it's on top of a hill, steps up, and if it's uh, moving down in the valley, it gets down there. Additionally, of course, you could use your target object orientation to let it climb up a wall. So if we, for example, uh, manipulate our mesh so that it gets something like a wall, something like this, I rotate this for 90 degrees uh, along the y-axis, move it up and move it towards our character. I want the character to climb up here now. So I'm animating my target object to do this first. 
So I'm starting to um, reanimate the target object so that the character will climb up the wall. Until that moment, it could move uh, up here and start to rotate. Like for frame 60, uh, it already has an angle of 45 degrees and be about here. At frame 90, it's already vertically climbing up the wall about here. And then, like Spider-Man, moving along the wall. Let's see what this uh, simulation will result in. So that's, uh, let's just look at the target object. That's the motion we want to have. And of course, we're selecting our armature again due to some issues. Our character model disappeared because uh, it broke up during simulation. So I have to let it appear again and select the armature. So let's have a look what this animation will result in. Again, I'm selecting uh, the armature and hit generate keyframes with the landscape selected as ground. And you see, without any hesitation, the character moves up the wall and finds its footsteps on this landscape mesh. So it really doesn't matter if you want to uh, animate a climbing uh, character, a spider, a crab, or whatever kind of insect or dragon or monster is uh, climbing your walls. Or if the human biped is just moving over rocks and uh, moving along a flat surface. You can animate any orientation by just uh, animating the target object. So that's it for the basic introduction to Balance Run. Let me just quickly show you uh, that Balance Run also works with Rigify armatures like this one. This character is from the open movie project Sintel. You surely know the model from the movie. And we are trying to animate it uh, with Balance Run. This time, of course, we're going to use the Rigify option. And again, let's hide the advanced options because they might be uh, quite irritating at the beginning. We have some parameters set. I already set some parameters in the advanced option, so they are kept for the current simulation. Um, just because they're hidden doesn't mean that their variables, uh, their values will be deleted. Uh, they are still present, uh, we just can't see them. So for the current uh, animation, we have a target object, um, which is called follow character target. Let's have a look at its animation. Uh, quickly delete the simulation, the animation of the character first. In the advanced mode, there is a cleanup function where you can uh, quickly just delete the keyframes. And here is the character target moving around the scene. So it's quite similar to the previous animation. The only difference is that we're now dealing with a Rigify armature. It has a lot of custom shape bones to drive the I key constraints. And uh, in opposite to the non-Rigify armature simulation, this time our I key targets are placed inside the armature. So to access them, we would need to go to pose mode. Now I can select, uh, for example, the I key target for the left hand. It's not in world space, it's in rig space. It's in the object space of our armature. And this is why we now have to choose bones, because the I key targets are custom shaped bones. Um, although they're acting as I key targets, they're still uh, treated like pose bones. But apart from that, everything else is very similar. You select your I key targets for hands and for uh, the feet um, right off. I think the hands are hidden in property seven and eight, uh, which you see in advanced mode. There are more, and for the basic mode, uh, they're 
just uh, four different options for the properties and four different options for the feed. So you can do dogs and cats and horses and tigers and lions and everything, dragons. But no ants or spiders or crabs, which would need six to eight. So the rest is pretty straightforward. Uh, again, we have a time duration where the animation shall take place. We have a time how long one step takes and our swing factor. So everything seems convenient. Uh, let's, let's increase the step time to 20 frames and the swing factor of 25% seems A swinging factor, a swinging factor of 25% seems convenient. So let's hit generate keyframes and see how it turns out. So balance run generates some keyframes on your timeline in a certain time frame, but that doesn't mean that it will animate your character flawlessly. This is not made to uh, completely replace the animator in the character animation process, but much rather to save crucial time uh, to find and balance out your character while it has to move along a surface. A balance run calculates that, so I hope you see that this is a huge time saver and it will save you a lot of time if you're uh, someone who is to animate a lot of characters. And our animation is made. Synthol is walking around the scene, just like our character before, following the character target and making some steps here. We see that maybe here at this point, so that's a first introduction to Balance Run. Be sure to check out the next tutorial where we go through the advanced options and all the dynamics parameters. I hope you like the results of Balance Run as a basic animation tool and see you soon. Happy blending. Bye.